Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So this time I am going to be uh, putting sculpt mold on and plaster. I am going to wait on painting the backdrop for a little while. Uh, on the other side, I painted the backdrop as soon as I had the pink foam board in, but I'm gonna hold off on that on this side. I wanna get the uh, hills and mountains shaped and formed and in place. That way I can better visualize how a tree line is going to look given where I feel I can put trees as view blockers. So the sky might actually be a little bit uh, lower on this side with the trees not quite so high so that this looks like it's at the top because there's a, there I have uh, what I'm calling high point, the highest point on the layout. So it makes sense, you're coming up over a crest of a mountain, uh, the trees are gonna be a little bit lower and the sky is gonna be a little bit uh, deeper in here. We'll see. Uh, since the last video I did come in, I've added pink foam board in this area. That's the only other area on the uh, center module that I didn't get done last time. Uh, I'm gonna leave you know places where I can plant trees on here and then kind of down in here into the back so that uh, I can hide this portal. This will still be a bridge. What I'm going to do is I will get everything reasonably done and in place for the sculpt mold. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to cut this support. Uh, might be the wrong order of things to do, but I want to get a feel for where everything is and then I can cut supports and then I can use more sculpt mold to build out uh, like the little cliffs, little edges that just support it on that side and this side. Then I can take that out and then I will build most of the trestle in place. I already have an idea in my head how I'm gonna do it. Uh, you know, it's a uh, branch line uh, narrow gauge. It uh, doesn't have to look pretty. Uh, it just needs to look functional and I've got an idea of how I'm gonna make that happen. So anyway, enough talk. Let uh, me get started uh, covering the track, getting things prepped, and it is Thursday night, so I think I'm probably going to get a chance to at least get some sculpt mold down in some areas. I'm going to start in there. That's going to be the most difficult to access. I'm going to give that area its shot first, uh, so I can start figuring out to uh, blend that in and hide it for the next stage. Anyway, let's see what I can do here. Track is protected. I am ready to start making sculpt mold. Probably start right up here first and then uh, go over that way. I'll do the uh, easy spots before I get to the uh, more difficult. So over here is my mountain making tools for sculpt mold. And uh, this is the box of sculpt mold that I bought at the start of the uh, COVID mess. A uh, 25 pound box, uh, Amico. And this has lasted a long time. This is still really about two-thirds full. So that uh, I have used to make the uh, mountains on the other side of the ON30. And then looping around, I used it to make all of the uh, mountains on the end scale layout all the way down. So that box has lasted a very long time. And I think it's going to provide me enough to uh, do this and probably this area over here. Other areas of this layout will have a lot of pink foam board, but not necessarily uh, like mountains and rocks coming out in all areas. So I won't need to use it as much, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to start mixing it up. I mix it up in small batches. This is a quart container, so I will put four scoops of sculpt mold, two uh, scoops of water essentially in that, and that's a batch. And then I will go back and forth many, many, many times <laughs> to there. So let's see what I can do. So right now, about eight trips back and forth with sculpt mold. Uh, I've got uh, the back end actually pretty well done. I've got to do more on the top once everything sets up and uh, do a little bit more over here. Then what I will do once this sets on the top area, I will actually go down and start working my way up from the bottom. Uh, that way I can uh, 
smooth it and smush it in, let the bottom pieces dry, and then keep building uh, up and up and up until I reach the top. We'll see what else I can do. It's still kind of early Thursday night, so uh, probably get a little bit more done this evening. So Thursday night is coming to an end, and I have got uh, the first coat of Sculpt Mold on uh, a fair amount of the vertical surfaces here. Kind of see how it's starting to look. You know, I'm gonna come back in. I've still gotta do quite a bit more down at the base. Uh, and over here, I've still got more to do on the sides to get it up to the end, and of course on the top, and then some of the other pieces. But this uh, this is going to work out. Got to put a little bit more of the uh, fiber tape down here so that I'm not uh, dumping sculpt mold down the holes. Down here, easy enough to get access to. Over here, I'll be able to kind of get on the sides and take care of that here in a while. Probably do a little snip on the. Uh, fiber tape like right in here and right in here just to kind of push it to form fit a little bit better which that's not a problem that is easy to do as well so uh, this will look good I'll get uh, two coats of sculpt mold on uh, various areas of this to give it the basic shape then the uh, skim coat of plaster and do a little bit of carving and a lot of smooth work in some of those areas here you know, this is rock strata that's nearly vertical. So uh, I'll have some fun doing a little bit of carving and uh, polishing in a sense of the rock to kind of make it look good. But this is working out so far so good. So uh, let's see what else I can do come Friday after work. Friday night <clears throat> after work and spending a little time out into the garage. I've got a little bit more sculpt mold put on. Got a little bit more of the self-adhesive drywall fiber tape in place so that I can get uh, sculpt mold on the vertical surfaces. Over here, I have got some of the rock faces uh, prepped for plaster. Did use like a waxed wax paper to separate this part of the layout from this part of the layout. That way I could press the sculpt mold nice and tight into that seam uh, between the two sections. So when the sculpt mold completely dries and I uh, pull that paper out, I've got a nice crisp seam. When I do scenery on that side at a later date, I'll put another piece in and fold the paper this way so that when I'm building the scenery there, I got another nice tight fit. I'll have some natural light like crack going up, but it's not going to be a large gap. It'll be easy to uh, put in, put a little bit of darker stain, make it look like a, a natural crevice in the rock. And I have figured out, <laughs> this time for sure, how my rock is going to be oriented. So this worked out well where I put in sort of the stepped. So these are like the faces of uh, bedding planes right here. And then uh, this area in between is, again, you know, the uh, difference between the two bedding planes, maybe softer rock material. So essentially, my ends of my rocks are going to go that direction. Uh, and you can kind of see on the top, I build up a couple of little mounds on each of them. So that's how the rocks are going. Over here, I will put in uh, additional details, uh, a little bit with sculpt mold to kind of, kind of build up layers and, uh, from down low to kind of this high area. And then it picks that uh, trend up again where it's going that way. Over here, I'm gonna use the plaster like I did on the end scale layout. And I'll build up a series of small ridges to make it look like this is more um, uh, weathered rock, as well as a cut for the uh, uh, Pennsylvania that came through. So I'll have a bit more ledges, a bit more like narrow uh, bedding planes in here. These will be thicker ones. You know, I've got thicker rock units like that thick here and, uh, you know, not so much here, but same thing there, you know, there, there, there. And I'll uh, kind of continue across on the top a little bit once I get to the plaster and I'll do kind of the same thing over here as I'll build up some of those. So I'm going to get this area done with sculpt mold yet tonight. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start uh, marking off a little bit better where I'm going to be making the cut here for a bridge. So I know it's going to be right about here. That'll put me on that side of that track. 
And then I'll come over here and uh, probably actually a little bit closer since I've got space. I'll put, you know, put a, a cut right through here and then I can build up behind it with more scope to mold. And uh, that way this is out of the way. The track can, the track's not glued so it can just hang there. That's okay. I'm not gonna be running trains for a little while. But once I get this done, and the first thing that I'm gonna start in with plaster will be right in that area, bring it around, and I'll get this area finished first, and then uh, come down in through here. That way, when I'm uh, done doing my plaster work, it's nice and solid, I can stain this, and then I can start building the trestle. Uh, I don't know that that'll be on this video, but uh, we'll see uh, what else I can get done. So it's taking shape. Slow but sure, it's coming together here. Well, I got the uh, wood piece cut from under the track, so that was actually easier than what I thought it was. I probably should have done it sooner, but anyway, now I will come back in with sculpt mold, and I'll start working on this. I'll kind of pack it up under here a little bit, start to build this area up into here, and then I can figure out exactly how I'm gonna build the trestle, because I'll have everything set to uh, go to the next step. But that'll come after I get sculpted mold and rock and other stuff in play. So uh, more to come. Friday night draws to a close. So I've got everything uh, covered with sculpted mold, at least on the upper part. I've been starting to uh, work a little bit more down below, but uh, no hurry on that. I'll take this bridge out um, actually in a while uh, and finish up that area down there for the supports. I'll just kind of do that all in one shot, make up a bunch of sculpt mold and go from there. But everything's drying, came back in, added some layering texture on this, give a, a base for the plaster coat, which uh, the way everything's looking, I'll probably be able to uh, start flinging some plaster tomorrow. Uh, we'll see here. Kind of the intent but it's also supposed to be a nice day so i know i'm going to be outside and out in the yard doing a little bit but i will uh, be working on the layout as well so let's see what mischief i can get into tomorrow well one more little segment to wrap it up on a friday night i've been showing uh face on this way and face on the other way now let's kind of look on the end you can kind of see how this is looking and the difference in topography from uh, this side of the layout over to this side of the layout. Now what I'm planning on doing is this is gonna be filled with a pink foam board as well. No rocks. This is all gonna be just sort of sloping up. It will line up with this, come across, and I've done it reasonably well so that both of them sort of line up. So this whole area right in here is gonna be not necessarily flat. I'll have some hills, but I'm gonna have trees going up and down. And then taller trees, again, from there up, so that about up to the skyline and just above the skyline here is going to have trees. So it's going to kind of transition from this side as someone's walking around the layout over to this side. Now also on uh, this particular side, there's going to be the gorges. So more than likely, eyes are going to get pulled from walking around looking up here to focusing down. So I can kind of help create the illusion again over that way. As somebody comes around, there's going to be forest covering this, then getting into more forest going up, and then a lot of different uh, pine trees over on this side with some transition points coming in between, just to kind of blend it in and take it over into some really steep scenery going on on this side of the layout. Uh, the other side over there, I'm going to do kind of the same thing as I'm doing here. There's going to be transition points, uh, there's going to be a little bit more rock in a couple of areas on that side that I already know what I want to do, but uh, that's going to come later. Now I'm going in. Saturday afternoon, and I think that's going to do it for this video. I've got my plaster coat on, uh, like right in here, you know, vertical strata angling off that direction, which matches other areas. Little hints of it over here, large rock faces that are just got some uh, lines in it, not much. Same thing over in this way, large exposures of rock, uh, vertical cliffs going along here. 
Uh, I think this is going to be pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do, and I'll uh, do that before I start the next video, is I will come in with my little wire brush and uh, kind of give it a once over here. I'll do that fairly soon as the uh, plaster is pretty well set, just to kind of get rid of the uh, little stick outs, little nubblies as I call them. And then I'm ready to uh, get out the stains and start doing some work on this. So this is going uh, actually pretty good. And I did uh, earlier take off the blue tape and I brought my trains through here to make sure that I could get past this. And it's tight. It is like a scale, maybe a foot from uh, the cab of my 10-wheeler, uh, which is the biggest locomotive I've got. All the cars will go by, but uh, that's the one that sticks out the most, and it has clearance, so I didn't do anything additional over there for skim coat. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, so uh, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.